<laughs> Welcome to the Thursday, April 28th, 2016 regular meeting of the Hopkinton School Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight, are, we're going to start with public comment. It's up to you. Well, we're not going to do recognitions, right? I have one. Okay, so we're going to start with recognitions, move on to public comment, then we'll have reports to the school committee, followed by new business, the middle school program of studies, the high school program of studies, and a capital project article warrant. We have no old business. We'll have our second opportunity for public comment and then items by consensus. Dr. McLeod, would you like to start with recognitions? So I was just very excited to learn that, remember the robotics team that came and they were so delightful? Well, they won. They placed first in Massachusetts. Wow. Yes, and 68 out of 200 in their division worldwide. Wow. At the VEX World Robotics Competition in Kentucky. How old were they again? They were middle schoolers, seventh and eighth graders, I want to say. It's like their first year, right? Right. Remember wow. how delightful they were when yeah. they came and they were just so, yeah. So they went and they were very excited to have the opportunity to go and then um, they won it. Oh, so that's amazing. Congratulations. That was, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any recognitions. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on to public comment. So yep. you can come on up and sit right here and we'll have, you have two minutes. So you can state your name and your address. Welcome. I'm Ann Beauchamp, Six Angels Way, and um, I'm a Hopkinton mother of two, and to our school committee and Superintendent McLeod, I'd like to thank you for opening the recess conversation. I do look forward to learning our current recess policies and our school's particular barriers to adequate recess time. I would like to ask the school committee um, and or the superintendent to form a subcommittee to assess the situation and gather feedback from the school and parent community. A committee such as this could determine recess-related goals and pathways to overcome identified barriers. I would like to offer my help as a parent and as an education and psychology researcher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have any, does anyone else want to speak public comment? Maybe later. Okay. So, oh, that's okay. Um, I'm Muriel Kramer, a uh, parent of six. I'm sort of past the recess conversation, but I wanted to throw in um, that uh, I am a huge proponent of looking at this with uh, the idea of maximizing the use of play, playtime, open space. Um, particularly if we have more time in the day for, for kindergartners, for example, things like that. Um, not only is it the way children learn, but it, it's also the way we stay healthy, the way we handle our, learn to handle our stress, um, and a lot of our social learning. So I'm very, um, very interested in this and would like to support it if that was helpful. Great, thank you. Thank you. So the first report we have is our student council report. And our student is not here, so we can have our liaison. We're missing him. Maybe. Always. He's a busy person. I know. I ran into him at one of the enrichments, and I was like, we, we, want, <laughs> we want to see you. So Jack. <laughs> Jack. So Cody. everything is awesome. He was the star of Kenyon Runner Day. <laughs> yes, he was. That's right. <laughs> um, so next we have a liaison report. And I know we've specifically called out the town charter review, but I'm not sure if anyone else has liaison reports as well. But we can I have the SBC, but I don't need to go first. Okay. I'm start the charter. However you want to do it, because mine might be longer. I don't know. Let's go this way. All right, we'll go this way. Um, so you all have read the charter many times, I'm sure. Um, and as part of the process, we're, we're at the point where the review committee has sent um, a memo to all town department heads and committees basically requesting input um, into what does and doesn't work well under the charter for your particular committee. Are there any edits or um, changes that we would have to recommend? And so um, 
so we've already actually talked about it once or twice he, um, during our meetings and I am on the committee so everybody doesn't have a representative on the committee but the school committee does so I, I do think that a lot of our feedback has been um, forwarded but I just you know because it's going out to all the other committees I wanted to make sure they had a, a final chance to look it over then from here all of that feedback will be incorporated and there'll be a lot of public input and public forums um, in addition, just by way of update, we're looking at charters from a lot of other surrounding towns, so comparable towns demographically and also abutting towns, just to compare and contrast and see um, what other towns are doing as they're going through a similar process. So um, that said, if there are comments that ha we have not already put forward to the Charter Review Committee that you want me to, um, to bring back to the next meeting, I will write them down. And Jean, particularly around um, sections on annual town meeting on page 10, um, and then the budget process on right. page, um, well, school to, school committee terms, terms of office on page 15, and then the section on page 24. Right. Yep. So right. So there's um, right. So there's a section in the school in the uh, charter that describes uh, the school committee and our roles and responsibilities, and obviously most of that is also defined through the Mass General Laws. So um, you know our statutory responsibilities regarding the budget and that kind of thing um, isn't really open for discussion. However, the timing of the budget process is also identified in the charter. That's been a topic of conversation at our meetings. Um, at our school committee meetings, at the charter review meetings. Um, the other topic of conversation, or a, a suggestion that has been put forward um, to the committee is limiting um, chairs of committees for serving more than two years in a row. So if that's something that you have a thought or feedback on, that's a, just, just a quick suggestion that's been put forward. Um, I'm trying to remember what other things might be of most relevance to us, but I think those are the highlights. So one thing that comes to mind immediately, having just come from a meeting with the moderator um, just now, where we were hearing final decisions about appropriations and CIC, is that it feels like the recommendation that department heads have um, submitted detailed budget requests by January 1st, mm -hmm. and here we are almost May, and still talking about something that had to be submitted months ago, maybe the whole, maybe everybody's timeline needs to be moved forward. Um, because we are asked to be starting these conversations in October when people have just arrived and are just beginning this year's budget cycle. We're just starting with that. We're asking, being asked to think ahead to next year's. Um, and then it feels that we keep talking about it for the next five months. Mm -hmm. And, and it is, it's a very different timeline than many surrounding towns I know from other superintendents who haven't even begun their process when we're finished ours. Mm. But it, we're not really finished it because then right. we keep um, talking about it. So um, I don't know. I've, I've always wondered about that, and I didn't know if, there, if that had been considered by the Charter Review Committee um, as a whole. I will definitely, we have had conversation around the timeline of the budget, and we're not at the point where we're making any recommendations mm -hmm. at all, really. We're just kind of discussing it, um, comparing with other towns and, and talking. There was a list of, of suggestions that were put forward to us right from the beginning that have sort of been collected over the years, so that we have discussed but not taken a position on. So um, so that has definitely been discussed, and, and in specific where the, submission of the school committee budget falls within that mm -hmm. so there was a recommendation which I have said previously um, at, at an earlier meetings so there was a recommendation to move our submission deadline forward and I think I heard loud and clear from all of us that that's not something that we're comfortable doing that would work well for us um, unless the whole calendar was moved forward exactly right. although but we did try last year to, do, to start our process earlier and um, found that because of how early the administrative team had to start, it just really was. Yeah, I, I feel like part of the problem with starting our process earlier is that we don't have any guidelines. And so the other piece on page 24 that I called out was if we are going to keep this timeline, then under se section 6.2c, where it says prior to the first day of November mm -hmm. in each year, we're well into our process by then. Mm -hmm. um, 
so we really need to have some kind of direction by October um, about the budget guidelines. And I think, and typically we don't even. I mean, that's a that's a rollover provision, right? And typically, right. We, the the guidance we get is directional at best. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked before about the month of January looking for some more detailed guidance around revenue and tax base provisions to be able right. to know kind of how we can craft our budget within that. So, yes. yeah, I, I, I think my, I'll sort of somewhat repeat my, my general feeling on that, which is that it's not that I'm locked in on a budget time frame. It's just, I, I don't necessarily see the value in to the entire process in adjusting mm -hmm. our time frame. So, mm -hmm. um, given our roles and responsibilities, we're submitting our budget differently than other town departments are submitting their budget. So, um, again, absent sort of a compelling reason, I don't see why we move it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm only one person. So, can I ask a logistical question with respect to the email that came to the, the chairs? I guess no one else got it. Um, is this something that we're that I draft answers to and we go through at an, at another meeting, or is this something that you're that that's what you're seeking feedback on now? And you, anyway, yeah, I, I don't know the difference because we have a liaison role, which right. I think is fantastic. Yeah. I don't know why if I should be the one filling this out. Only if you want to. I think the same email went to all the all the chairs and department heads, and again they don't. And I think there in there there was an invitation to come to a meeting. So unless that's something that the, you all feel that you want to do. I am there to represent us, so I don't think that it's probably necessary for the Board of Selectmen or the School Committee or the Appropriations Committee, for example, because all of us have representatives there. But having said that, I don't, you know, there's no reason not to if you think that that would uh -huh. be of benefit. But I think we're all kind of on the same page about where okay. we are with this. Um, that's, how, that's how I felt yeah. about it. I wasn't going to respond or to these, to the questions because I didn't, I, you actually just brought up the only ones that I think might be remotely relevant or something we want to think about, which is sort of what works for us with respect to timing and the, one, um, the board committee chair rotation. The one other um, question that's been raised that would be directly relevant to the school committee is uh, before the charter, the selectmen had some ability to not put articles on the warrant, requested articles. The way that the charter is written. They do, you know, any committee or um, department can put um, articles on the warrant, and citizens can if they have a certain number of signatures. Um, and so, <coughs> there are times like when we had the special town meeting for the school, where they really, really strongly encouraged no other departments to put warrant articles, but they can't prevent them, and they did, and. That, so that was incorporated into the special town meeting. So that is another question and would be relevant um, to the school committee. Just what, if you think that there should be any flexibility there or any um, ability by the Board of Selectmen to take some things off or, I mean, they can vote, they do vote to recommend or not recommend them, but they can't remove them. And uh, so that was the other topic of conversation because we often put articles on. Um, That's the only other thing I throw out there. So ultimately, all the changes that are, are proposed by the Charter Committee, do those all get voted on by the town? Yeah, so good question. I should have started with that. So the, the way that the whole process works is the Charter Review Committee will take all this input, have public forums, draft whatever revisions come out of that, and then there will be a special town meeting most likely in the um, where the town has to approve the revised charter. Then it has to go to the Attorney General for approval. Then it has to go to the ballot. So originally we were hoping to have the charter revised for town meeting this week. But even if you did that, there's no possible way it can go to the ballot at the same in the same month because it has to, in the meantime, go to the Attorney General. And so given that, we drew, and because the committee was called together late we, we felt like we needed more time and that a year in between voting it at town meeting and then voting at the election was really difficult for people to um, remember and it just kind of didn't make sense so the timeline is that um, most likely they'll do a special town meeting you know somewhere in the fall winter then send it back to the Attorney General and then the vote will be in May of 2017 so any changes that are made would not be affected 
effective until that po that point. So you you know you hear about another committee talking about changing the town clerk from elected to appointed. That wouldn't take effect whether they bring that article forward on Monday or not. Um, wouldn't take effect until a year from now. The only other question I have is. When we talk about moving the timeline forward, <laughs> I'm directionally challenged <laughs> as to which direction we're talking. Are we going into December? Or are we going forward into February? So but I was saying go forward into February, yeah. March, so that it's closer to the, the this whole, all of these reviews that take place. And we'd be closer to getting a better idea, a better direction, I think, maybe a better idea of what the percent um, increase may or may not be. Um, it, it feels like we do such a thorough job of, of examining every single line in our budget and it, it, it almost makes it a focus of our work for the entire year and then we start all over again. Mm -hmm. Instead of being able to start into the year, let the, you know, let us get going with, with our academic year, um, and then start thinking about the following year. It's very disruptive when you start asking department heads and principals to be thinking about, well, what do you want for next year? And what are the priorities? And programmatically, when we can't even get our year started and off the ground and our focus on our current strategic initiatives, it, it, can, be, it can really be a distracting way to start the year. So it's just a thought that, and I wondered why we do it so early, um, that if we could start a little bit later, like even beginning, you know, an initial kind of look at it in December mm -hmm. um, instead of in October would, I think, be really helpful. So is there any, um, and this might just be um, playing devil's advocate or just trying to take that contrary position, but yeah. is there any benefit to us sort of going first and having done that thorough process and being done with it and having a number and then when it comes to the Board of Selectmen and they have to look at other people's budgets maybe for the first time or that didn't have this long lengthy thorough process were sort of I'm going to say favored but mm. do you know what, I because do know what you're now that is the structure though because we submit our final number so the other town departments I think and I don't have it in front of me submit their requested number like around January 1st and we're submitting our final number February 1st and they're still working on the other department numbers and so the Board of Selectmen doesn't vote their number till the middle of March and send it to appropriations. Although this year, then they asked them to do something to it and send it back, so it got extended further. So, um, so I sort of feel like that is the structure. Um, but why are the other departments able to give their final numbers later than us? Well, my guess is because ours is bigger, and you know, it takes a little bit more. Juggling. But then it feels like the pieces around the capital articles happen outside of that process. And so today we found out that one of our, that there was a no action on a, on a number that was kind of, interestingly enough, a $300,000 marker that had been thrown around that we needed to find in our budget. Um, and, and so it, it just seems like instead of it being a connected discussion that is open and, and um, we're looking at, at the at the town as a whole and the needs of the, of the town, it feels a little disjointed, mm -hmm. and that process kind of takes on a life of its own. And I get and understand that different committees need to weigh in on what they're being asked to weigh in on. But when it's done kind of separate from the total, um, so this happened to be the bus parking lot discussion today. That the kind thing of is too is that I, what I don't understand is we have ours in by January, mm -hmm. nothing's done with it until at least March right well so I think that so so I think that there there's reasoning behind us getting ours ours in prior in, in February because um, not to say that our you know that ours can't be adjusted post February but I think this is the Gina I might be echoing the point you're making so um, it, it, essentially we sort of establish our final budget and then the town knows what is coming from our side of the budget right. so that the town budget can be crafted around that is but the, the way it's structured is always, percent but, is always pretty close right yeah i mean it, admittedly it is so i and i think but the other thing i think we need to be careful of here when we talk about this is and and i i don't disagree that 
the integration of the capital with the operating budget right. would be beneficial. But in fairness, we don't really do that right now. It's right. not like we looked at our percentage and t and tagged in the capital ask that we had and said overall this is actually the hit we're asking uh -huh. for, which admittedly is because we don't even know if the town's going to debt exclude it, if it's going to be part of the operating budget. It, it, so you could operate these as effectively as two separate budget processes, uh -huh. but under a previous town finance director, they started getting all of the debt under the levy as opposed to debt exclusions, and so that made it have to be integrated more. So I, part of it is sort of what's going to be the philosophy of the town right. in terms of capital mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that is going to, that probably drives whether, but, and see, I'm kind of back and forth on this. I'm having a debate with myself. <laughs> the, the, um, How's that going? Be, not that well. <laughs> uh, the, um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, we are, regardless of whether we're debt excluding the capital items or putting them into the, the under the levy, mm -hmm. We're asking the town for a certain percentage. It's either That's two and it. a half, or it's two and a half plus the debt excluded item. So right. we probably, as a whole town, would benefit from thinking about a more coordinated approach where we could actually say, I think, I think that's been asked at pre previous town meetings yeah. to say, can you show us what the actual overall increase yeah. is going to be this year? I'm not sure. Yes, and I, I, and I think we're any all of those agreeing. Questions at all. I don't think I'm try I'm struggling with what the advantage of is for us. Of being so far out in front of it, because as I said, the the whole, and I and I understand that that then it's clear what the what the school department is going to need to function. But then it kind of gets tabled mm -hmm. for several months. Yeah. So if it's going to be tabled for several months, and if we could have more time to put it forward and work with our admin on what it's going to look like a year out. We would definitely benefit from that. I would also say this consideration that that we've operated under that February first deadline. Obviously, the entire time the charter's been in existence, but our budget timeline has been extremely variable over the years. In terms, I mean, we used to the school committee used to start with our meeting first meeting in January, talking about the budget. That would be we'd have wow. well, we'd have the we superintendent's the proposed oh, yeah, budget yeah, in December, right. yeah. and then we'd meet every week in January, yeah. and we adjusted it to earlier. So, uh, presumably, we could operationally control our budget timing and discussions and still maintain that February 1st deadline. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see your point, Dr. McLeod, because my thoughts, too, are the fact that there are aspects of our budget that are very volatile based on the needs of the students during the year, especially our special education budget. And as you get further into the year, you have more capability of seeing what those needs are going to be, especially with your incoming kindergarten class and things of that nature. And then additionally, the winter months seem to be when things break and, you know, we, we tend to be able to plan a little bit more on our facility spend. And those are like the more variable spends that we don't have a lot of control over. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that point in, in being able to have more time to assess those needs for the following year as opposed to making the decision right when you come back in the building and things have been taken care of over the summer. So I don't disagree with you. I just don't think I fully understand or appreciate the other department aspects that have to go around our budget as you were describing um, to understand whether or not there's really a barrier to moving us out but I would certainly be a proponent of moving it out versus moving it in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we haven't varied from that, th so that's good. We're consistent. Um, and don't forget I, earlier. <laughs> um, so I think, and in, in addition, um, I think I, I will um, remind them that we're also looking for more clarity or a, a rethink of the CIC timeline. Because it feels like we submit really. Don't we do it in like October? Well, it there? says right on here January something. Right? They have to deliver. They like have it. to deliver to by January fifteenth okay. to the to the town. Yeah, but we it, get has, it to them. Has there been any discussion? I'm curious. Has there been any discussion? Because I feel like one of the places where we get constantly hung up at this stage of the game is almost a procedural challenge, which is that any of the capital articles need to be reviewed by CIC then need to be reviewed by appropriation, then need to move on to the warrant. Or, I mean, they're on the warrant, but mm -hmm. they put both of those independent approvals. And I often question sort of what, do, is there clarity on the distinct purpose of each? 
and and it just it just seems to me that we end up in this situation where I mean I, this is speaking to the days when I was on appropriation, albeit briefly, we had warrant articles that we just simply were acting upon the day of town meeting because CIC hadn't hadn't taken action yet, or, or had and a, and a we quorum. and appropriation can't actually do anything with it until CIC takes it. So right. it feels like there are some procedural challenges there without I think a real clear and distinct purpose of each role and so, when I read through the charter it didn't seem like it I mean it, the language is the same right. so it doesn't seem like it clarifies it so let me throw this out there as well because since the charter has been written we the town came up with camp yes. right? um, which was a good idea I'm not sure it's really been updated is that a model that you sure think is of value and and the charter would benefit by an incorporation of um, so, so for that practice, I, I so I personally think yes, and I, I think that the the the, it, the, the, the way the capital the improvement the way the capital improvement committee's role is expressed in the charter actually seems to point directly to camp, which right. is that their their charge is to deliver a capital plan, right. which is in many ways different than approving individual warrant articles. Right. And so I wonder if, yeah, if we focus something more on a capital asset management plan that could be honestly part of an annual, should be part of an annual budgeting process and potentially a town meeting process, but right. um, but rather than having that somewhat, what sometimes appears like a redundant focus on the individual warrant articles. All right. Well, those are all good suggestions. I think my, um, you know, as we continue to follow the process and I'll, I'll pay particular attention as, a, as we review other towns' timelines to how some of our concerns might be better addressed in some other formats and see if there's something that we can recommend. And I certainly will bring it back um, for any discussion, but if, unless there's more. I just, the only question I have, and it's related to what John's talking about, it may not be directly on point though, is the, the charter was developed before we had a town manager. The charter created the town manager position. Oh, it yes. did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so were all of the various groups that review, to do their reviews during the budget process, like appropriations, the town manager, the board of selectmen, capital improvements um, committee, do they, like, I, I just wonder if there are any redundancies there, because it just seems like, it seems like a very large group of people reviewing with the same focus, but you know, I, I so I, I guess that's what the only thing I wonder is if the if the team's looking at whether or not there were redundancies in that. Now that we do have a town manager, now if it was developed because we had a town manager, then maybe they decided that all those teams were needed for, uh, you know, for there to be distinct groups looking at it from different aspects. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think you raise a good point, and just solely my perspective and opinion, I think that that's why this first review is so important because, you know, they wrote the charter in anticipation of including a town manager and they diffused some of the authority of the board of selectmen and um, invested it in the town manager position and so I, to me this is the first time where you're they're really having that conversation which is is this working out the way we envisioned it and did we have a good vision or what is you know basically what is the tweaking that we need to do because do we have too many hands in some pots and not enough in others or or whatever so i think you just really hit the crux of the conversation um for this first review for sure so i mean i don't know if you're looking for opinions on the limiting the number of years for the chair i don't really i hadn't really ever given it a lot of thought based on the fact that i think uh, there are no roles that are longer than three years until you're elected again so well the planning board is five. Oh, it's five five, five okay. years um yeah i mean i don't in my memory of the school committee nobody's ever done it for more than two years in a row but yeah I, if you have an opinion i will register it if not no i just wondered where i think maybe there's some other committees committees that, that feel like the terms are too long i see okay i don't think it's directly impacting our committee so you're not trying to kick us out <laughs> okay Thanks. thank you thank you um john you're on a hold back on esbc and we will move to um move up item 5b so we can call it mr bishop and at the same time while he's up here we'll we'll talk about the turf field fine if evan wants to get out of here <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Bishop, it sounds like we're I going should, to start with... Is the rest with of the committee okay? I only asked because John was next, but I'm, are we all, we're all okay with moving I'm up. good with that. Yep. Yes. Sounds like Hello. the chair would like you to start with item 5B, so we'll start with the program of studies, oh, if that's okay, okay. Yeah. and then I'll come and join you for the turf field discussion. Yeah, wait, 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 yeah. We can start. <coughs> it's okay. It's perfect. No, no, it's fine. Totally and, and you know, <laughs> I, I, I will just preempt before you get started um, just what a wonderful public forum you and Alan and, and your teaching staff had um, the other night uh, on the STEM um, initiatives and all the wonderful things that are going on um, in the community. I feel that you were so open and, and provided so much information for families um, that there seems to be very little questions remaining. Um, but I'll add to that because I know, Jean, you were there and I know that, that you have we're very impressed with, with the discussion that um, a follow-up to that was one when one a young man, eighth grader, stood up and said um, very appropriately, um, you know, I'm one of those students that was affected by the, um, by the current um, math pathways. And um, as a response to that, Mr. Bishop and Mr. Keller have been looking at alternatives for our current eighth graders, and we've come up with a plan to address students who, um, f over the summer, who would like to participate in in addition in basically the equivalent of preparing them, for, no, the equivalent of Algebra One. Correct. Yes. Um, so the district is going to offer wow. for students who are identified <coughs> as appropriate for that opportunity, um, and then they would pass a, an examination to be able to then, when they start ninth grade, go right into geometry. So we've addressed the gap that had been a concern. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want, before you begin this portion, to thank you and Mr. Keller for all of your work and all of your teachers um, for taking such a close look at, at that Thank you. issue. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so for our consideration is the <coughs> request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve the high school program of studies as outlined in the agenda materials. Um, we have a motion in front of us. And I don't know if you want to speak to the motion before sure, anyone I, makes it. Yeah, I, it can be brief because you can probably see we, we haven't made many changes to the program of studies for next year. Uh, I've been meeting with our, our subject matter leaders over the last few months, and we often talk about the classes that we have, and, and we feel comfortable and confident about the offerings that we have at the high school. Uh, there was one uh, department that we have examined this year. It's the technology and engineering department, which is brand new. So we've done an assessment in, in some of the new courses that we have uh, hoping to offer are mostly in that department. Um, we have four that we're proposing to be in the program of studies for next year. There are no budgetary implications on any of them. Uh, the way it works is we have a number of courses in our program of studies and we run what is the student's interest and if the students aren't interested in it, we don't run it. And sometimes it goes back and forth from year to year. So if we were to run one of these courses, the reality is that another course that we offer this year might not run, okay? So uh, I'll just quickly go through the four classes and if you have any questions on them, I, I, I'll certainly be able to answer them. Um, the first is a sustainable engineering course, um, which is going to have our students really focus on real world global problems. Um, the focus of the class is on the UN global goals around water, energy, uh, and other global issues, waste management, food. Um, this has come about this class from some of our students taking some trips over the last few years and this has really been a desire for some of our kids to get more involved with, with kind of sustainable things like this and so um, that's why we've created the course um, and we've already had a number of students say they'd be interested upwards of 40 to 45 kids so we'll okay. probably at least run a section, one sec uh, section for a semester and one second semester which is, which is exciting. The second is a 3D design and fabrication class, or a fab lab, as you might want to call it. And that's an interdisciplinary course. It's art and it's engineering. Um, <clears throat> I think that this is a perfect class for a student that is interested in architecture, um, 3D design, sculpture. Uh, we talk a lot about STEM. We had a STEM night the other night. But there is a movement of STEAM, and the A is art. And this class would really be an insert for us to talk a little bit about the engineering and learning design process when it comes to art as well as science, technology, and engineering. So again, we've, heard, we've had some students really interested in this course, so we're excited that we'll be able to run at least one section of that, hopefully next year as well. Team Robotics, this really isn't a new class. Um, we offer an intro to robotics, but a Team Robotics class is um, going to be a full year course. The intro is a semester-based course. So the Team Robotics really is for the kids who want to take it kind of to the next level. There is an expectation that they will have at least two out-of-school interscholastic competitions. 
when it comes to the robotics. Um, they will be learning skills such as leadership, project management, presentation, writing skills. Um, Doug Scott did a team robotics uh, club and class back in Natick, and so he's bringing this over to Hopkinton as well. So we're excited about it. Uh, we've talked to a number of the kids who are in intro to robotics that would be very interested in trying to take this team. So you can take them both. So the intro is more of a semester base in class competition. This is more of let's take it outside and, and compete against other, other towns. So we're excited about that as well. And then the last one is art history. So we have AP Art History offered at the high school. We usually run up upwards of three to four sections. Um, but there are some students that aren't quite ready for the AP level, but are interested in art history as a subject. So we are going to put this in the program of studies uh, at different levels, college prep and honors, if students want to learn about art history but do not want to take on necessarily an AP course. And so those really are the four new courses that we have in the program of studies. Um, I think we do have a wide array of courses for students at all levels, and like I said, I feel like we're pretty comfortable and confident in what we have right now. We just feel these are some small tweaks to, to make the program of studies even better. So. Great, so I don't know if you guys have any comments or questions. We have a motion for you. I just think I went to high school in the wrong century. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. I agree. All right, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the high school program of studies? <coughs> so moved. Seconded. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Nickerson. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous and so carries. So as part of the superintendent's report, we were going to talk about the turf field update. Mm -hmm. so. so I'll just kick it off. So um, a committee was formed. One of the uh, Mr. Bishop's school improvement plan oh. goals was to look at the what would be involved in, um, in, in, in having a turf field? This is something that we've been, certainly there's been a lot of community interest in. Um, we've heard about, repeatedly, about how we seem to be the only town around without one. Um, so Mr. Bishop did form a committee and using athletic revolving accounts, did gather, worked with Gale Associates to gather some preliminary information um, on what what could potentially be a, a turf field um, at the high school. The, uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Bishop talk about the packet that he just handed to you. Um, but we realize in many discussions that we've been having um, that this, this proposal, this um, article that we were intending to talk about on Monday at town meeting um, will come as a surprise to many because um, when there's been discussion amongst people in the town, broadly, any discussion about a turf field has assumed that that turf <coughs> field would be located on the current, what we call the football field, and I'm, three, yep. I'm reminded that that's not what I'm supposed to call it, because yep. it's more yep. than just a football field. Um, but Mr. Bishop, why don't you talk a little bit about sure. the discussions that had taken place to date, yep. and then the school committee will discuss what they, what they want to do, sure, do um, moving yep. forward. So there was a committee put together, um, Kathy Herville, a Hopkinton resident herself who works for Gale Associates, and, and she's the one who put together this packet um, from the revolving account. Mr. Cargill, Al Rogers, uh, members of the Parks and Rec, um, Mr. Gonzalez, who's here tonight, who's a, a, a math teacher but also administrative intern. He's been part of the committee as well. Uh, Dr. McLeod's made a few uh, meetings. Um, and we've met probably about four to five times this year to discuss the possibility of, of trying to get some type of turf surface. Um, and in this packet is, is what came about from the feasibility of the, the study that we had the Gale Associates to from the athletic revolving account. And so typically <clears throat> when we talk to people about this, they just assume it's going to be on the main field, that field three football field, so to speak. And I think when I first went into this, I thought that would probably be the place we would want it as well. But when we had Gale Associates kind of do some specs and give us some, some, some figures here, and as you can see that on the second page of your packet, um, the reality is the space that's within the track on field three is too small to have it be a multi-purpose sport field. Um, if we wanted to have it be just a football field and maybe play some field hockey, we could do that. I guess we looked at it as wanting to have more access to more sports and, and more community use. And so you can see with the specs, uh, the track is around the outside and <clears throat> soccer and lacrosse fields are going into the track. So in order to have a, a regulation soccer or lacrosse field, we'd have to widen the track. And I think you guys know what it looks like out there. There's really no place to widen the track and the track is relatively new. So <clears throat> that got us thinking, okay, what else can we do to try to accommodate as many sports as, as, as we can? And so as you go to the next uh, page, this is the field that is directly below field three, our fields four and five. And this is a much larger complex, as you can see. 
Um, and what's, att what's uh, attractive to the committee about it, because I think the committee, when again, we are open to all options, but I feel like the committee did like this one because it has the uh, option of having every sport, soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, football if you wanted to, and you could see a baseball and a softball field is there as well. Um, around the outsides in this proposal, there it's tough to tell in this packet, but there are lights potentially, uh, bleachers. So, um, you know, we felt it was more flexible, more sports can compete on it. It actually gives, uh, I know there's a number of schools like Dr. McLeod mentioned in our league that uh, have turf and we don't. I, we do have some great grass surface. I think we do a great job of keeping them, but this would actually give us the opportunity as a high school, I know it's for community use as well, but as a high school to have fields that are turf for all sports as well as grass, which would be unique uh, in, that, in that regard, which is exciting. So. <clears throat> And then as you, uh, as you could see, the next uh, graph is, is a smaller version uh, of, of this where we wouldn't actually do the whole field, but we would just do some of it. Uh, the, the actual black outline is where the turf would be. So it wouldn't be that softball field to the right, but it would be that other area there. And then I guess I did want to show the last graph, which is the second to last page. And I don't mean to go through it too quickly. I'm sure you have questions. But we talk a lot about community use, and I think this is important that it's a community project. And um, you know, there's going to be outside organizations that are probably going to want to compete on this, whether it's a Memorial Day soccer tournament or a Columbus Day lacrosse tournament. Um, as you can see here, there's a possibility upwards to four to five fields that we could create for, for youth sports. Mm -hmm. And so I just, you know, taking this all into consideration, yes, I think field three is certainly the football field, we'll call it. It's certainly what people will think of first, but when hopefully we take some time next year to, to do some educating around this process that um, this is a this is a very viable option as well to get all of our kids on here and as many community members on there as well so that's some of the conversations that we have had this year like I said we've met uh, four or five times um, I know we're going to kind of push this back a little bit to next year and, and I think next year is going to be the process of us you know getting this out to the community and, and trying to get buy-in for what we're trying to do so and I think to include, you know, I mean, clearly it wasn't that field three wasn't considered at all, but no, a little bit was, more yeah. in-depth <coughs> information because there is misunderstanding around, you know, the, the specifications on those fields. <coughs> yep. um, so it felt like, having said all of this, it felt like we had been prepared to come forward with an article for $100,000 design phase of we wanted to be able to go to town meeting at least having done feasibility and not just talk about it as a concept. Yes, we'd like a turf field and we'd like $100,000. The thought was, let's do feasibility um, using athletic revolving fee account um, to fund it. And here's some information. Now we can go to the, to the town and ask for some funding to, to fund the design phase. Um, having said that, it feels as if there might be enough misunderstanding about field three that could cause the article to fail outright having said that we just we went to the moderators meeting and not expecting this alan and i just before this meeting um to learn that it it already had been um, both appropriations and capital had um, recommended no action on that article so we kind of said oh well we were going to be talking with school committee tonight about this <coughs> very topic um and so now it's before you um, to determine what next steps are as far as what we want to do on Monday night. So just to follow that up with respect to, what did you call that meeting? The preparation for all town meeting? Yes. Or, okay. I called it the moderators meeting. The, the meeting. moderators meeting. Um, with Ray and uh, the chair of the Board of Selectmen. So the Board of Selectmen chair, Mr. Polico, was very surprised and as were we I would I would go almost uh, upset that this was we were taking no action on this and or that it was recommended to take no action and his point was that he still wants this project to be moving forward mm -hmm. and he believes if we need that's fine if we're gonna take another year to investigate and review um, where it should go and can it definitely not go on field three or whatever it is we think we need to do to get our ducks in a row to do feasibility a year later. Um, he really wants us to ask for whatever money we need to do that process. And so the point was made that will still, we can amend the motion, it will fall within the, the motion that we have here. We can, we can make an amendment, ask for less than $100,000 so that we can 
continue this process of, I don't know, investigation. Hmm. Which, which I think would be worthwhile because it would allow us also to use the forum of town meeting to potentially introduce this concept to a lot of the town that may not be fully aware of what we're talking about doing. Uh -huh. um, you know, I mean, even looking at some of these, some of these potential um, diagrams, I think would be helpful in a discussion about what we want to investigate at town meeting. The fact that we have explored field three, and it would give us that opportunity to move the process forward and engage with the community and find out what the appetite is and um, what the, and really be able to educate people. Uh -huh. but the thing I have a concern about is. <laughs> this is the first time we're seeing it. Mm -hmm. We haven't even figured out what our appetite is. I mean, I have questions just looking at this as well. And so it's fine to propose to provide some of the schematics and provide that information, but I don't feel like we as a committee could get up and have not necessarily a recommendation, but any kind of cohesive presentation ourselves because we <coughs> haven't really had time to digest this either um, I don't disagree with with the the thought process of you know appropriate uh, requesting an appropriation of some more money to do more investigation or whatever that entails because obviously there's been a lot of work done I don't want to I don't want to minimize what work's been done um, but I mean there's going to be a ton of questions on these schematics. I mean, and I just don't, I don't feel like we as a group even know what our response would be. So I have a couple of thoughts. One is, um, I mean, I think what I'm hearing everybody say, and I certainly feel this way, if the Warren article is to ask for design, I don't think any of us are there yet. Yeah, right. So we're, we're not, I mean, I, I think that this is a really interesting concept, um, but I think there's, I think there's enough question that we're, none of us are ready to say we're going to plunk money down on design. This is what we want to do. So I think for me then the question is, it's a really interesting option to amend the article for basically some supplemental feasibility money. So as of now, we've used some of our own money, not taken any money from the town. I mean, it all comes from the town, but um, not taking any money through a warrant article to do this. So I think that that's a really interesting suggestion but I just don't know what is the scope of that money how much money are we talking about and how much more feasibility is there that we can do so I, this cost eight thousand dollars okay this work um, this work is complete there, there wouldn't be any other field other than getting more information on the specifics of field three what would it cost to expand the track is it even possible that we have not explored past the boundary issues that that Evan identified so given that we have all of this information and it's broken down as you can see on the last page by different phases i don't think just adding on field three would be a significant additional amount of money can i ask one more question though what about what is the field i don't know the number uh, between doyle and the field three but you know like yeah the field right behind is field one was that reviewed it was the, well after we spoke, I f um, it's not large enough, just like the football field, for have a, a, a soccer field on it. Okay. So the width is not the field right behind so, here. But I so think, I think what Dr. McLeod just mentioned about the, is going to be one of people's first questions because I do think that when anyone was thinking turf field, they were thinking field three, the football field. Uh -huh. That was what was in my mind. Uh -huh. Because the the next question, and this happened to us with the new school building, is. Well, what happens to the football field when you build this turf field down the other uh -huh. place? So I feel like if you don't have, if you don't have the expense um, budgeted or described for what it would take to make field three work, mm -hmm. it's going to be a missing piece that people are all, all going to want to know. Yeah. So I think that's an important feasibility aspect. Yeah, I agree. So you said this work cost eight thousand dollars. This and what so you see tonight. This yes. would cost nominally. <clears throat> more than that I mean that's what I'm thinking so John. I, I mean the, the other and I know we, we briefly discussed this I think the other issue for consideration here is uh, we're talking about asking for less than twenty five thousand mm dollars -hmm. I, I personally don't want to put a capital article I, mean, I first of all I don't think we're supposed to put oh, a capital yeah, article yeah. up there for less than twenty five thousand dollars so right. I almost feel like the better call would be in that case to pull this mm -hmm. let's keep it moving forward and we can even because I think it'll come up as pulled and people might have questions about that and I'm sure we're going to be able to find $8,000 yeah. 
somewhere well, I think it would be closer to two. And that I think we can definitely find. Right? So mm -hmm. I think that's it would be closer to, to that. Yeah. Right. But but I think the other thing is is that, that then throughout the as we move forward with this process, it's also gathering it's educating the community and gathering feedback and appetite because you know as we look at this this is I mean I think this is uh, so personally I my kids play in a lot of fields throughout the community we are behind in this there's no question about that but other communities have a range of options from their football field to fields that have three of these and so um, I think we want to be able to engage with the community to provide them with some information because the community may want to do this and the football field. Mm -hmm. And and then it could just be a football and field hockey yep. field because we have yep. soccer. I mean, I, I don't want to presume what the community wants when this is going to be such a significant space for the community. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're <clears throat> sitting here tonight where we are because this wasn't a stated goal. Yep. So um, I'm, I know that we like to go to to... Um, town meeting well prepared um, obviously in order to get the support that we want to get from the community we don't want them thinking that we don't have all the information and if we, we in fact don't I think it's important <coughs> for us to always come back to our strategic plan the goals that we set for ourselves and our priorities and and to consider other things that come before us and so this is you know in discussing all of this with Evan in preparation for Monday and in um, feeling like we want to maintain control over this project the school department does so it sounds to me that what I'm hearing from you is that um, we you it sounds like you would prefer us not to even have it on the town meeting floor I think based what, on what I'm hearing you yep. say mm -hmm. if there are additional incremental costs they would not be really even rise to the level that you would request through a capital article however I think you know I will have to vote if we're going to take this off the warrant but um, to make the statement that we're not dropping the project but that we're not ready to to at this point for the town to vote on it but I think the opportunity you know first in the <coughs> summer we always discuss the school committee goals the superintendent goals I think we need to have a conversation about how to move this forward because there are some really important pieces that we need to make sure we have answers. So first, what are the community's goals around the use of this type of a property? Mm -hmm. I heard really good questions at the Know Your Vote um, event on Monday about envir environmental impacts, and probably there are answers to that, but that's a big piece of community um, education. We it would be really helpful to understand how the partnership between Parks and Rec and the town is going at Fruit Street, what the money is that is being generated what the use is that they cannot accommodate requests that they're getting so that we can factor that into what we think we might need here um, and then additionally there's the you know the whole maintenance and then there's the Irvine Todaro property yeah. and that committee is just getting started and it may be that if what the town is looking for is this and it's related to youth sports maybe they'd rather have it over there and it's something separate from the high school I just don't know that right now so my culminating comment is that um, you know I think that this is a great I mean, already some very solid work has been done so I don't want to lose momentum I think if we bring this forward on Monday night we're gonna hit a brick wall and we're gonna lose a lot of momentum and take a giant step backwards so I think taking a pause um, so that we can you know expand the committee a little bit clarify what the questions are and, and how to engage the community is a good step. But what I will also say is that we may have the opportunity, if there is a special town meeting in the fall or the winter regarding the charter, that we wouldn't have to wait a full year. We may be able to bring it back if we work you know, efficiently um, and, and do some solid communication with the community. We may not have to wait the full year. And I, maybe that's a little bit of an in-between step for people who are disappointed if we're going to be taking it off on Monday. So. I think it's a great point about the special That's town meeting. All I, say. I also think that, I mean, in light of the fact that we, I can't take credit for it, like we as a committee didn't have the success, but the elementary school building committee had the success of really getting out and getting opinions directly on what the town wanted for a new <coughs> elementary school building. I actually think, as sad as this might be, you would get more <laughs> response on this because there's so many parents out sure. there who are very invested in their kids sports sure. and and 
I, I do think that you'll you may get some novel ideas on things and I hadn't even thought about those other two properties and how that might be come into play so I, I just would strongly suggest that we when we do publicize for a public forum that we don't limit ourselves to just the high school parents this is like a district-wide thing because it can impact from all age groups and so I think you can go beyond that because there are people who live in town who have kids that don't go to the school district that mm -hmm. if right. this is a youth this could be used as a youth sports facility this this impacts really right. everybody across the community even you know adult maybe adult leagues so yeah, yeah we need to find a way to make sure we get it to everybody and I would just echo what Jean had said about in trying to assess what kind of revenue we would be able to drive from this um, because that obviously always helps with offsetting the cost that's Absolutely. involved. I think it's a big part. Yeah. Okay. So would anyone like to make a motion to remove Can I article? Yeah. One more question. I, this is just purely about the materials yeah. in front. So the last page where it talks about the cost estimates, mm -hmm. um, I know this is very early stage, but I just want to make sure I know what I'm looking at here. So it says option one. Is that is that the cost estimate for this, the one on fields four and five? Yes. So that and that's design construction. That's everything. Whole ball of wax. Whole ball of wax. Okay, thank yep. you. That's there I just wanted to make sure three. I knew what I was looking at. There is not one of these pages for field three. In this right. Okay. Right. I just wasn't sure what option yep. one Sorry was. Sorry about that. Yep. Yep. Option one is that field. The only option. The only option. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion to remove Article Twenty Seven from um, the artificial turf field from the warrant? So moved. Seconded. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Nickerson. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Sorry. So I just notify Mr. Camalo. Is that what I do? Yes. Okay. And I'm I'm a no. Okay. Oh. Okay. You're a no. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear. Okay. Okay. So that was part of your report. I think we're good, Mr. Bishop. Thank you. And now we're going to move on to middle school. Can we do middle school program of studies? Is Mr. Keller's here? Thank you for taking me early. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Good evening. Hello. Mr. Keller, were you here when I was singing your praises, or I, do I have to do it again? I was not. Please do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, um, watch the TV show. <laughs> okay, we'll do Before it. you came, I was just talking about what a, what a great public forum um, oh. that you, you and Mr. Bishop had, along with your teachers, and, and uh, how I think it built a lot of understanding about the, the math pathways, um, your openness to the questions that were, um, that were being asked, uh, and then the follow-up that you've had I, since, I know, um, with parents, I think has gone a long way to um, not only establishing trust, um, but also in, in making people feel like they're being heard and that they're, that you clearly, I mean, I know that all of those wonderful things are happening. Um, but I think to do that and to be open to the public is really important. And then, again, to really be excited about the variety, the differentiation that's happening for kids. Um, and then the final comment is about the, the, the um, we did talk very openly about the issue of overrides. And, and it was great to ha get that out. Um, I think out there with families and to have them be part of the solution to being able to really truly differentiate. Um, so having said that, I'll, I'll turn it over to you in terms of any questions or your program of studies. Thank you. Thank you for doing that once again. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I, uh, you have my program of studies uh, in front of you. Um, and, you know, the, the major changes, as uh, Dr. McLeod has alluded to, uh, really the only um, substantive, substantive change changes are around math. And so um, uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, capture this in a nutshell. But essentially, um, at the beginning of the year, I uh, had a conversation with Dr. McLeod and with uh, Bob Burlow at the time. And uh, we assigned two teachers to, to evaluate our math program, particularly what we're doing for our students who are above uh, grade level uh, in their math skills and abilities. And um, they spent um, a good portion of the year um, meeting with me, meeting with Dr. McLeod, meeting with Bob Burlow. Uh, and, and meeting with teachers and uh, gathering data from, from students. And ultimately, um, at the end of it, we are uh, making a recommendation um, to, uh, in some ways, kind of return to where we were in terms of a math program. Um, 
I'll kind of give a, a little bit of uh, brief history, which I think most of you probably know, but um, we had an accelerated slash advanced math program uh, years ago. Uh, and then with um, Massachusetts Common Core, we then um, pulled back a little bit on that math program uh, in terms of dropping it in grade six and went to a, a grade seven and eight program where students were covering three years of material in two years. And in that first year, we had a lot of feedback from, from kids and from parents that it was too much, it was causing too much stress uh, on, on students. Uh, as I said at the STEM forum that night, um, you know, I, I think you know, ultimately at that point we uh, pulled back and we made our um, program for students with uh, above grade level uh, skills and abilities uh, less rigorous and I think uh, I think we made a mistake at that point in time I think we instead needed to look a little more closely at our criteria for entering that program because we, we did have students who were succeeding um, and um, have, however we did make the move to an honors math program where we had a, a much larger group of students in our above grade level math uh, course um, and so uh, ultimately in looking at our program in this year I, I would say and I said that night at the STEM forum is I don't I don't think we're serving uh, either group of students really well, those students who have significantly above grade level math skills and those students who are uh, at, at grade level. And the teachers have uh, expressed that pretty regularly. Uh, we've heard that uh, pretty loudly uh, from parents and, and students have expressed that as well. So ultimately, uh, a little bit of background there, but ultimately what our recommendation is uh, essentially in, in terms of our math program is to uh, leave grade six alone. We have traditionally, or in the, I would say in the last five years, we've had uh, no, um, separate math classes or different math classes in grade six. Grade seven, uh, we would have three uh, math uh, courses. Essentially, we would have math seven, uh, which is a co-taught, which is done in a, a co-taught model. Uh, we would have our honors math class, where the majority of our students would be in. And then we'd have a pre-algebra um, class. So those would be our three offerings in grade seven. There, is, there are placement criteria uh, for students to be placed into there. We're, um, I'm going to have students take a fluency assessment. Um, we'll look at their um, math MCAS. Uh, unfortunately, we have to look back to how they performed when they were in grade five um, because we don't get the results in enough time. Uh, we're actually um, um, planning on employing a, an Iowa, it's, it's an it's a aptitude assessment, it's the Iowa Algebra Aptitude Assessment. Uh, many school districts in the area are using that and um, I recommend it very highly. Um, and then we're going to look at their year-to-date math assessment grade and then the teachers will complete a rubric on students. And so we're saying that students need to meet four of those five criteria in order to uh, be placed in uh, pre-algebra grade seven. And then uh, in grade eight, um, we um, will also have the math eight, which will be a co-taught model of, of math and an honors math eight class. And that will be where the majority of our students are. And then we'll have a grade eight algebra one course, um, again, for those students who um, meet those criteria um, that I mentioned earlier. So um, the only thing that's different in the grade eight placement than in the grade uh, seven placement is that um, we're looking at the students who are currently in honors math. So we're going to give the uh, Iowa algebra assessment to all those students currently in the honors math seven course. Does that make we sense? We also talked with families that night um, about that this is not the this child's only opportunity. You know, if if students are um, meet these criteria and are appropriately placed in seventh grade for pre-algebra and then algebra, that that's great. But if your child is not maybe ready to apply themselves or haven't hasn't determined that math is something that they really enjoy when they're only going into seventh grade, there's an opportunity to do that in high school. Um, and the current way that, of doing that is is to be able to double up on math in in their so, in their sophomore year. Um, what I said earlier before you got here was that we have found a way of offering an alternative for the eighth grade students that you that you did find earlier on. Um, that would be a one year, a one time thing, but there would be opportunities for for select students in seventh grade who maybe were not in pre-algebra, but really want to you know do something over the summer or really want to do something independently to improve their skills. We want to be aware of and sensitive to the fact that. Not all kids are ready for this level of rigor, and that's okay. We need to be responsive to that as an as a, as a educational community, as parents. Um, it doesn't mean that if they don't do it in seventh grade, they, they forever will never get to BC Calc, because that's simply not true. Um, and we, we discussed that that night. 
um, so that kids can feel like, okay, there, there's still another opportunity. I had the opportunity to speak to some high school kids, students, and one of the students told me that very story that, you know, I really wasn't ready when I was in seventh grade. Um, and But when I became a sophomore, I really was ready to apply myself. And now he enjoys it. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that he's not afraid of. It's not stressful. He's really enjoying it. And we want to be able to follow students' leads on those kinds of things as well. Because they're, they're young. They're still young when they're going into seventh grade. Yeah, I, I would just, I, I'm probably just going to parrot exactly what you said, but I mean, we see that all the time, and that was one of the reasons why we stopped it in grade six, is we felt it was really early to yeah. to begin identifying, and we do see students in grade eight that weren't there in grade seven, but uh, something clicks as they as they get a little bit older, so we definitely need to have flexible pathways. And when we ask the math um, SML, you know, the teachers know. It's clear the students who are just really, really great at math. Some kids are really great at writing. Some kids write. So there are areas of strength. Um, and we asked her how many students, and she said 30. So I think we were talking about BC Calc at that point. Um, but so there are certainly students in seventh grade who teachers can identify, oh, yeah, they are ready for pre-algebra. And we want to get them into it. But we want to stress that that doesn't mean that if, you're, if your child isn't, that's still OK, too. Um, and, and I think sometimes that could be more the boys than the girls, just developmentally. So. Um, Thank you for doing all of that work, and and it feels like um, you've been able to, you know, certainly um, address any concerns that have come your way from from families. Yes, I've, I mean I've I've received, as I know you have as well, uh, a few emails uh, from parents, and um, uh, yeah, it's been largely positive feedback, which is some questions about how yep. it's all going to play out. But so we have a motion before us. Um, do you guys have any comments or questions on? I just I want to echo what Dr. McLeod said about the quality of the forum. It was the Thursday before April vacation, and I, even with old math, I sat in the back of the room and counted like 70 people, which is unprecedented for us. So it's definitely a topic of great interest to parents. And um, you know, I think you have worked really hard to constantly reflect on what you're offering and the expansion of the pathways and the flexibility that you've put back in. I think really puts the emphasis back on the right and current fit for the students and takes some of the pressure off or the fear out of making a wrong and permanent feeling choice. And so um, just really, again, thank you to all of the teachers and, and both of you that were involved in that. I know it was a lot of time. Thank you. So. Yeah, I just I appreciate you outlining the process that went into this too um, because I know that this is a, a program that you're probably looking forward to not reviewing again for a little while because <laughs> yeah, it yeah. seems like it's something nice. that we come back to a lot um, but it seems like that that um, it, it takes into account a lot of the feedback that has previously been received about flexibility um, and just the fact that this is being proposed and um, we haven't really gotten any communication about it and there is no one here tonight to speak about it speaks to the effectiveness of the forum because that hasn't been the case when changes were made previously so I think the communication that that is evidence of how effective that communication was I don't have anything new to add Alan so I'm not gonna extend your evening but thank you very much because I thought it was very thorough thank you um, I have a question just about the criteria and the threshold do we have a threshold is there and so when you say as long as you meet four out of five then you're in let's say it's 38 students I mean I, I don't really know how sections work yeah but I, or let's say it's only four students for one particular grade level is there a point with which we're gonna end up reverting back um, because we don't have enough students who meet for the five criteria is there flexibility in the criteria or are you pretty certain you're gonna get yeah, I right mean, number. Um, so uh, Miss Weiss, one of the math teachers, and Miss Anasaskas, another one of the math teachers, they've really been leading this charge. And so um, they've been talking to teachers about, you know, identifying the, the type of student that they feel best fits. And they've also talked to several different surrounding middle schools. And so um, I guess the short answer to your question is that um, I, I certainly in no ways want to set a cap on this. I, I don't want to say we can accept 34 students. That's I've never wanted to do that when it's been honors, accelerated, advanced, and now uh, algebra. So, um, having said that, though, if if the, if you know if after going through this criteria, we had four students, 
Um, I, I certainly would want to look at our criteria and say maybe our, maybe our criteria are too rigid. We're basing our criteria right now. I mean, we, we've identified um, the parameters in each of these. Um, the only thing that's a little bit um, unknown at this point is the algebra test. And so we've gotten information from Natick mainly is the one that's given us a lot of information around, uh, and I think Millis is also using it, um, around what their kind of cut scores have been for the algebra aptitude assessment. Um, but our you know, what we're getting from surrounding towns and districts is that um, that this range of numbers will, will yield those students who are ready for a pre-algebra and algebra. And we've also talked to the, the company that makes the Iowa and, and feel pretty good about that, but we won't know that until they actually go through the assessment, if that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, it does, it does in that we, we don't think we're going to end up with too few. No, we don't. And then we're going to come up with a plan to not have to cap it. Right. Because that's, not, yes. that's, that's right. not part of the plan. Yes. So it does. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Um, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the middle school program of studies? So moved. Seconded. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Nickerson. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous and so carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I could finish my report if you want. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you for your flexibility, everybody. I wanted to um, make a plug for Screenagers. It's gone out on listserv it takes place Wednesday May 11th at the Hawkington Middle School Auditorium um, this is a really important topic and we cannot even begin to imagine the unintended consequences and the influences that screen time is having on our on our young people the way they think the way they communicate um, I met a parent as I was leaving the middle school the other day basically thanking me I have nothing to do with it it was all mr. Keller um, but saying this is a real problem and she said and it's not just for my kids it's a problem for me and I need to identify and it is it is so true I left the high school the middle school yesterday there were three students waiting for pickups heads down didn't even know I walked by you know and and I think we we worry about car accidents distracted drivers it's just become such an addiction and such a problem um, socially, emotionally, I think psychologically. And so it just is really important for people to come to this and to really start thinking about it and talking about it as families. Um, certainly as educators, you know, the fact that we're one-to-one, -one, no, the kids aren't on their phones, but they're certainly on their Chromebooks and their, their iPads, etc. So I'm um, hoping that we have a great turnout, that students come with their parents, um, and there will be um, a panel following. And so I'm looking forward to, to a, really, a really good discussion. Um, and then the, the last part of my report tonight was on uh, the response to public inquiry regarding the recess. Um, as we all know, we, we received um, in a, a petition, and um, I know that um, Ellen has responded to that. I think our, our as you've noted tonight, John um, and Ellen, uh, sorry, Jean, uh, the turnout to that public forum that we had on on the, the STEM pathways, um, those are th it's something that people are really interested in, and it really provides an opportunity for an open discussion. And we've done this in many ways. We, we did it beginning with, with full-day kindergarten discussions. You talked about the turf field and giving families opportunities for a conversation. Um, and so I did, I, I guess it was the day after we received that petition, I had planned a, a coffee, one of, one of the superintendent's coffees that had already been in place. And I had, you know, I'd say 10 people show up to that coffee for that purpose because they really wanted to begin a conversation about us considering ways that we could offer um, more recess time at the elementary level. And so I did send a poll to all of you in anticipation of tonight's meeting um, so that we could make an announcement tonight about an upcoming public forum for this very purpose to have a discussion, you know, a brief presentation around our requirements, our time on learning requirements, our, uh, our requirements as part of the association agreement, um, and current scheduling conflicts, those kinds of things, um, and then being open to, to just listening and, and responding. Um, and so the, common, the night in common for us was May the 10th, Tuesday, May the 10th. We have looked to see that this space is available, and it is, um, middle school library beginning at 7 o'clock. Um, and I will, 
if with your approval um, tonight, I will send a listserv announcement mm -hmm. tomorrow um, announcing this public forum to begin the discussion um, about something that, that is, is very important to a lot of people. Do you, is that okay? Yes, that date sounds good. okay? Did you I say did, seven? I said seven o'clock on the tenth. Yeah, I didn't want us to have to be spending a lot of time looking at our calendars at the no, meeting tonight, so that's why I pulled you. Yeah. I love the, that doodle poll. I think that's, that's just great. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. So that is it. May the tenth, Tuesday, seven p.m. here at the middle school library. Um, we really wanted to get this in in May, and I know it's a very busy time of the year. But certainly, any follow-up um, discussion following the forum or further opportunities, if people can't make that night, you know, I'm always open. To providing opportunities for for families for parents so um, we, certainly we can begin there and if there is time if people are frustrated because they're busy that night um, I'm more than happy to offer uh, additional times okay um, I just want, I just want to add to that because we did hear from Ann Bochum tonight uh, requesting a committee um, in requesting specifically of the superintendent and the school committee to form a recess subcommittee and my response with, with which I shared with the school committee to um, an, a parent who had earlier proposed that was that we would do the public forum first and then based on the information exchanged there vet the idea of whether or not it's appropriate to have a committee at this time or when it would be appropriate to start a committee um, if that was still of interest after that exchange of information. And so I don't know if anyone else wants to weigh in on that um, or if that was a, everyone's agreeable with that response and just have a public forum and then we can discuss after that the need for a committee. It feels like, I mean, it feels like the right order um, okay. to, to have that discussion and the information sharing first and then determine how best to take it forward, whether that's a committee or something else. So I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, so now we're moving on to the school committee chair report um, and not on here but my first report is going to be about the Todaro Irvine property which maybe went with liaisons but I'm not even sure where we are in our agenda. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, did we do, we didn't do ESBC either. We didn't. I just want, I want okay. to make, we, I don't care when we do it. I just, we, I have some yep. updates. So, so Irvine Todaro, um, my only update is that I assume, um, you guys might want to appoint someone else or vote someone else as the liaison member to that before their before their next meeting. Which is when? when? Which is when? Which is um, <laughs> second. Oh, I suppose you'll do that when you have your new committee member. Um, we don't. So we just had one this week uh, meeting. So it probably it will be within in two weeks. Um, but I don't. We don't have a date yet. So I'll, uh, fair enough, I'll bring it back at the beginning of May. I just want you guys to think about it. Who wants to raise their hand for that? Yet. It's really, there's no end date. It's the committee that's going to go on perpetually so that we can talk about every possibility for that many acres of land. I'm selling it, just in case anybody really wants to do it. Um, <laughs> so that said, they did meet um, earlier this week. Where the, the conversation is based around what... Um, and who we should involve with respect to finding out what the interests are for the property. Are but they planning a meeting all summer? The work accomplished. Are they planning a meeting all summer, or can we wait until we have our liaison discussion in the summer? Oh. Um, I think they plan on meeting basically every two weeks, but I will. Mm -hmm. I will the answer answer to who they should involve everybody? Um, I guess in, in what way? Right. Well, I just are you going like to send out a survey and get everybody's ideas well, at least of, of from what a, their like, town boards and committees, right? Or shouldn't or organizations? Yeah. Oh yes, they would like okay. to go further than just come back to your committee and and see what your committee's property uses are. They would like to actually poll the community at large. So on the committee are three abutters, mm -hmm. and then representatives from a number of town committees: Parks and Recs, Planning, the Trails Committee. School committee, board of selectmen, um, but they are not just interested in necessarily what the boards want. Um, right. That's the first step. But then they're interested in what the community wants. Okay. 
I think that's actually a really good idea. But I mean, because there are so many, op we just talked about turf fields. There's that opportunity. There's what do you want to do with the center school building? I think, you know, it would be who someone in the town hall to really do a comprehensive survey that all three of those groups could access information from and really use in their planning. So, or a Google poll, <laughs> <laughs> a doodle. So, are you saying um, we should move the center school over there? <laughs> so next um, for my report is the end of cycle evaluation feedback um, so thank you all for doing your individual feedbacks as you saw when I sent out the email with the summary um, well first I'll talk about the process so the process was that I sat down with Dr. McLeod um, rotating the evaluation so no one was particularly on top and well first we went through and we did the I'll say the numbers but in general the you said no particular the ratings, order. Right. The ratings we started. Um, then as we went through each of the goals and we added comments, we would rotate that pile, right? So no, it's not like we always looked at Jean's comments first or Lori's comments first or John's comments. So we tried to get a fair representation of comments from everybody. Um, we, if they were redundant, we didn't include every word from everybody. And then with respect to areas of improvement, same thing. If they were redundant, we didn't include them. Or if um, we felt that they were more directed to goal planning for next year, we didn't include them. But that said, if there's something, if there are comments that you had, um, you can bring them up in this discussion or so that the rest of the committee is aware of them. Um, and we can also edit the um, summary document, which we'll hopefully be signing at the next meeting. So, and then um, I guess how the rubric came about was I had asked a question about a particular goal of Dr. McLeod's, which had different, um, it was sort of varied with respect to our, um, how we rated her, whether it's proficient or exemplary. And so, I think it was, uh, anyway, with one of them, I said, well, I guess I don't really know what it means to be exemplary. And so then that's when she said, you've got to look at the rubric. So I don't know if everyone else that did that, that, did that when they um, went through their evaluation. But I thought that gave us a good, a sort of good ground um, or place to start with respect to how we're rating her. Um, because, you know, it's. I, I guess it, it was hard for me to sort of what what the, what is the spectrum, and so how do you get from proficient to exemplary? What more did we expect from her? What could she have done? And so the rubric seemed to, at least for me, help me and and maybe make me want to modify some of my ratings. So that's why I brought it up to all of you. So um, I can't remember how we did this last year. But we can start with uh, step one, which was the progress towards her goals, the professional practice goal. Two folks had met, uh, I'm sorry, three people had met and two had exceeded. Um, the student learning goal, all five committee members had met and the district improvement goal, all five had met. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any, any questions on that. Want to talk about why you may have done met versus exceeded or if you want to um, change your assessment or rating, I should say. So does the rubric help with that particular one? I thought the rubric really the was rubric for, is the for the lower next level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, the professional practice goal, yes, you can go to the rubric under 4C communication. It's the same idea. So if you go to 4C mm -hmm. on the rubric, which I'm just scrolling down, um, 4C slash communication demonstrates strong interpersonal written and verbal communication skills. Um, so proficient is defined as demonstrates, basically it repeats it. <laughs> so that's not great communication. And then exemplary demonstrates strong context and audience specific interpersonal written and verbal communication skills is able to model this element. So that's the difference on the rubric. Um, it looks like under professional practice goal, when I look on this grid, Ellen, it, it's, it says three and two. I don't know where we messed up on there. And then on the front page it says three and the other way around. It has it the other way around, so I'm not sure why. Um, but nevertheless, it's something that because it was one um, goal that there 
that you were not unanimous on, it was worthy of discussion. Do you see where I mean? Look, I'm going to pull it up here. On this page, it's the other way around. Which page is it the other way around? But those are our state, aren't, okay, it's, sorry. It's the it's oh, on the first page. On page yeah. five. Yep. So that is my rating on the professional practice goal, which is goal one. And then the student learning goal I'll figure out which is which goal two. So it's, my it's question between <laughs> proficient and exemplary, I and I remember this last year, is that what I find to be the difference between the two the distinction, according to the rubric, not my distinction, but that, is that you can model it. I, I never quite understand what that means. Model it for who? Well, model it for your administrative team? Yeah. Model. So they, I think the different, that's a great question, Lori, and they just throw that in, right? <laughs> um, they do. It's for every single one, and so you feel like that's not much of a distinction, but actually the distinction, I think, that is pertinent under communication is that it's context and audience specific. I think that makes um. the, the distinction around communication um, for that one, as opposed to modeling it. Um, I think sometimes when modeling, when they use that language, what they're talking about is that um, you, you could be somebody that could provide professional development for other superintendents in that area. Um, Right, which is difficult for me because I'm like, how would I know if? Well, that's the problem with this system because you're evaluating, you're evaluating me, and sometimes, and I've tried hard this year to give you more evidence because some of the things that you're evaluating me on, you don't get to see me do. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about sp context and audience specific, interpersonal, that would be, you know, when I'm having difficult conversations with with principals, for example, or in a personnel situation, you don't sit in on those. So you don't know if what you see, typically publicly, um, if I am, in fact, context and audience specific. But you have seen me in enough varied roles, whether it be with children, or whether it be in a public forum, or whether it be with you or the Board of Selectmen, that you may see a difference, that my, my communication style is context specific. So you can consider that. Well, I mean, in light of that distinction, I was one of the Met Raiders. <laughs> Graders? I don't know how to put it. But um, then I would change it to exceeded. So that's the mistake between two and three, because during our conversation, I changed mine yes, to three. So that's the difference between page one and page two. So. In fact, it was already at three. Yeah, okay. it's at three. And so now it's now at, four. at four. Okay. And I, th and I think, again, so th reflecting upon the rubric as I was thinking about this today, I, 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 would, I would tend to agree I was also one of the Met, but in reflection upon it, you know, specific examples that I can think of, um, probably the one that sticks the most in my mind is just the process with the elementary school building and I know I mentioned it in my um, in my particular evaluation was the number of different audiences to which you were able to present eff effectively the same material but in a very different way to recognize what was going to be important to the K and 1 teachers at Center School versus what was going to be important to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, what what were the highlights that you wanted to make depending on the audience and I did see a, a real adaptability to that so um, yeah I, I think some of the I think some of the challenges with this system are in some cases there's a desire possibly slightly unfairly to to move the bar every year but the rubric doesn't move the bar every year so uh -huh. um, I think maybe by putting it in a met, we've gotten used to the fact that this is a strength of yours. And you know, so, I think um, I think, and that's and that's not fair. So well, I think that that's you. I think that that's that's part of it too. I think that's why I get yeah. we get to set new goals every year, mm -hmm. and this is one I've had for two years, and yeah. so I have it has been a real priority of mine um, on all sorts of levels, whether it be communicating, really. Um, being out in front of it <laughs> with social media, particularly with all of you, yep. um, is a, a really high bar <laughs> to, to sure. be able to manage um, with, with the increasing speed of social media. 
Um, but it has been something that I've taken as a very, very critical part of, of my leadership. Um, and so I appreciate you recognizing it as something that I'm... And I think it, it, I, I would also highlight again, it, it, you, you brought up with the social media, it's a continuous improvement area for, for everybody, but I think I particularly appreciate also that you've been reflective as things have happened where you sort of realize that sometimes change in practice is necessary, yes. right? So things maybe that you didn't necessarily think we should be updated on, right. needed to be updated on right away. Right we talked about some of the impacts and that process changed. So um, I'm just adding to why I'm changing my rate. Okay, thank you. So uh, just a procedural question here. If we're changing our rating as a discussion tonight, should we keep track and then resubmit to you or like how does this work? No, I'm just going to keep track on the on the summary. Okay. That's the only one so this filed. is the missing step that we didn't have first the first year yeah. where we got to have this discussion and then come up with you would come up with your decision and then um, the final the final report will be submitted at the next meeting yeah, and, vo and voted on. Our individual ones are artifacts they don't actually artifacts. they don't actually get submitted or they're just just yeah. this one got it right so and we'll remove the numbers too right yeah yeah the yeah yep. i did i submit to desi for, right. it'll be yeah. public and um but i think your point is it does You'll we don't need to if we change what we submitted to you we don't have to go back and change it and resubmit it because that doesn't go yeah, that's right. further yeah. anyway it's right. just the final one got it and then you'll vote next time okay. yep okay Okay, goal, student learning goal two. I think I got this right. We all, all five had met. Um, I'm not sure if there's, we want to have a discussion about it. Anyone? Nope. I guess my only question too is, I, sorry. That's right. Is that, so you both sit down and go through this. Do you get the opportunity to read through all of ours, even though mm -hmm we make a summary that highlights it and there are some redundancies because obviously we have the same things to talk yes, about. I've read them all. Okay. Yep. And we actually did it together. We sat together and looked at, discussed whether or not it was redundant. Um, so it was uh, very thorough. Gave me some great feedback, some great things to think about. Okay. And it'll help when we have this conversation about goal setting too. Mm -hmm. And next year we can do it in two years. <laughs> We're just getting good at it. We get to get your all. Okay. Okay. Goal three, operational systems, develops and executes effective plans, procedures, routines, and operational systems to address a full range of safety, health, and emotional and social needs. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to discuss this one. Um, but this is already in the exceeds by the majority. Which one are you yeah, on? Clear. So I here, know. here, I have no idea. What I think we just <laughs> took a big here. jump. No, here's Am the I problem. Jumping? Yeah, I'm jumping to this. They don't line. They don't exactly line up. They don't. Line yeah, up. the problem under district improvement. I'm really doing a good job. Unlike you're doing great. <laughs> unlike, you know, this is I, like I was in that chair last year. This is not easy. No, <laughs> I, I so, actually shouldn't look at it down here. It's not helping. Do you want my help or not? Because yes, go ahead. If I'm not so. helpful. So the problem here that happens is that under professional practice, there's one goal. Under student learning, there there's one goal. But under district improvement, I actually had two. Okay. So you are giving me a rating. Um, but when you break it down and look at the first of those two district improvements, I actually got an exceeded because three of you voted exceed, mm -hmm. exemplary, and two voted proficient. But then with the opposite, not the opposite, but then under community and business engagement, um, that was the effective partnerships with families, community, that one was four proficient and one exemplary. So that would be a place where you might want to have some discussion. For the for okay, that rating. I'm sorry. You said on district improvement three. Mm-hmm. Three of you voted exemplary, two of you voted proficient. Okay. And on four, it was four proficient, proficient. and one exemplary. Okay. Got it. You're saying we add that together for this. I don't know if you top. add or if you just talk about So we're it. six versus four, if you did add it. Yeah. That's true. Okay. No, I think that's, that makes sense because then with, if one person moved on one, then you end up moving or being a tie. So one of the things that Ellen and I talked about was sometimes the disconnect between what we read in the comments and what I received on the rating. Mm -hmm. 
So the comments under operational systems was consistently just how many, how many, how much, many improvements have been made, um, and how significant that's been around um, the school facilities operational system. This includes the new building project. This includes all the work with um, the director of, of buildings and grounds. Um, so there was a lot of really positive comments, um, and then. I guess the conversation that Ellen and I had, which sometimes led us to the rubric, was, well, what, what more would you have liked to have seen accomplished under that goal? And then under the next one, um, community and business engagement. This is effective partnerships. So this is the community organization, um, tech, accept, families, um, cultivating effective partnerships. So that's the the same discussion. I don't know if we can pull up the indicator, if that would help. Under indicator 2A-2. I can't tell you how much I hate this document. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea what we are. Um, for example, under 2A-2, creates and maintains a district environment in which custodial and other staff take personal responsibility for keeping the campus clean, attractive, welcoming, and safe, is able to model this element. Um, proficient is develop systems and procedures for the effective supervision and support of custodial, clerical, food services, and other staff effectively so that the campus is clean, attractive, welcoming, and safe. So I think um, looking at the rubric. Um, I, I actually think we, we are this year, um, although I think that you did make great improvements, and I also think that I rated you exemplary. Um, I think that we actually are really within the proficient. I'm not going to change my rating, but, but if I think about it, um, that's really what you've done this year. It's uh -huh. too bad that it hadn't been done um, prior, but you've really put procedures in place to supervise and, uh -huh. and get everybody on board, but I, I don't know that I've seen pride. or that I would see the um, sort of personal responsibility. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. So I think, so um, I think yep. that's a tough one. It's a tough one to be exemplary. I think that's, mm -hmm. I, I do think that's sort of where I was too. I, I think it's been a, I, I, so it was a focus area for you. Yeah. I don't think it was, if I have to recall, I don't think it was a goal last year. I think it was in response to situations last mm -hmm. year. But I do think we're, I do feel like it is, it does fit into that, that proficient mm -hmm. standard. This one, the rubric doesn't help. <laughs> well, I guess, um, so, no. I guess for, so, and if I, if I read the rubric and the way I think about it, when you say like in which custodial and other staff take personal responsibility for keeping the campus clean, I, I mean, I, b being candid here, I mean, I think that you, you've had a tremendous amount of improvement in this area. But I think it took a lot of your own management. And so I think the next step is how do we make sure that that happens without mm -hmm. you having to, that, that feels like the difference between those two to yep. me. So yeah. Does that make sense? I would agree. Okay. Can I just argue the other side? I think that, you know, we saw a lot of evidence about the new, um, uh, it's not a spreadsheet, but the new system and, um, and I think that what that system does with the amount of, you know, the response time, the who did it, the when, what was the response, and the follow-up, um, and breaking it down so that the school principals are driving that process more directly within their own buildings and whatnot, I think that that's a, that, that is exactly what you created. Whether, oh, whether people, if you're, if you're talking about do people feel internally personal responsibility and that's their motivator I, we can never measure that mm -hmm. but i think you set up a system where they are held responsible and accountable in a in a different and more clearly defined way and so that's why i went for example around that one and i'm going to stick there but you all do what you want to do well i can i respond I, I appreciate that feedback i feel like this is one where it very much was a joint a joint goal and so i feel more comfortable with a proficient, quite honestly, um, because this did not happen 
only because of me. Um, I think there were a lot of people that were really part of improving. Of course, most, most notably Mr. Rogers, um, for whom this was a shared goal. And so I'd like to, to share that credit with him um, because it will be his responsibility to sustain it. And that's what's important about this is putting the systems in place. But if, if I'm doing a good job with my leadership, that should be able to be evidence of sustainability. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I, I guess well, you're not going to talk me down, but I appreciate what you're it's, one, it's one of the things again it, it, for me it makes this this the way this process is structured so difficult because yeah. I do look at that as so this probably won't be on your goals next year. Well, so, definitely. So if the <laughs> so if the systems that you've put in place take hold and and maintain that district environment. We're not going to measure you on no. it next time, so the well, exemplary won't reflect. Like that's you will though. You won't directly under my goals, but that's but what's we will crazy under the standards. about this. Yes. Under standard two, yep. you still will. Yep, yep. that's a good point. Okay. okay, so we're good. So remind me of that in two years. <laughs> but I, I think a year ago it came up too that it's really difficult when the goals actually include stuff that's not measurable, right? Because mm -hmm. I think there are some other goals or in the rubric that sort of mm -hmm. make it seem like personal pride right and it's just there's things you that you just subjective. can't you can't measure mm -hmm. um, so that's just and, and I do think we said it last year that's just something to keep in mind when we look at how how the what the goals are that you're going to set for yourself yeah. and um, sort of have an upfront discussion about how yeah. is everything in this rubric really measurable and to the sure. extent it's not what's our plan yeah that's a good point we're, we're getting better every year so <laughs> sorry not to really no. over this so we're talking about goal three right now, right? Yeah, except because <laughs> kind of goal three here, which is a which is a part of this yeah, yeah, yeah. third line here. So we're not changing the met, but then what I was trying to figure out is are is anything changing on the three? Because we are in this like we are in exemplary for the majority, but well, you have to look at the next one first. Yeah, I think that's what's tricky sure. about this one. Damn, this indicator f goal four is actually indicator 3A2. It's not indicator uh, 2A2. I see. I so see, if I you see. go down to 3A2, I think this is a really helpful one if you look at the difference that's between six and four proficient from. and exemplary there. Um, I think that calls out the Got it. The fact that the, the, the partnerships improve district effectiveness is what calls out the difference there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like you need to go to actuarial school for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. So we're saying we don't need to change that. Well, I think, are we talking about 3A2? Mm -hmm. Promotes the learning and growth of all students and the success of all staff through mm -hmm. effective partnerships. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Yep. But then it's, yeah, but it's indicator 3A2 yep. up, up under that one. Yep. And so, do you want me to read out the rubrics? I no. think they're all looking at it. Okay. Are you? Mm -hmm. I am. Would you like to? I was, but you can go, you, you don't have to read it. It's right here. That's a tricky, that's another one that's just Dis impossible. Di district, it, di the community, partnerships with community organizations, community members that improve district effectiveness. Yes, yeah, that's how do you measure that? Well, and the, really the distinction is Increasing the types and numbers, which I, if you starting from a high yeah. bar, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to. Yeah, the different, what I did differently this year is I prioritize my relationship with, with as you know, with Accept and with Tech okay. and with mm -hmm. Commerce and with, I, I made, making sure that I made time to get to those things a priority mm -hmm. um, because I just was not attending them regularly with everything else that was going on. Because it was a goal of mine, I, I feel like I met it um, because I did. And you, I gave you evidence of, of, of my participation in, in all of those. Um, but I, I can't, yeah. So I'm going to add to that because I don't, I don't know that it's just, I mean, I think that you worked hard um, this year to have a different relationship with the Board of Selectmen through the budget process. 
I think, I don't know if the 300th committee in that, the, the big party last year really falls within this year's, um, but I, I kind of think it does, and I think that your visibility there and um, participation in those events and then partnership with the HCA, which is really starting to come to fruition, the um, 26.2 Foundation and the, the BBA and that contract and sort of actually getting back on top of something that hasn't we haven't had to deal with in 10 years. Um, so I think there has been an increase just in the past year of partnerships. And, and you know. Or, or the the efficiency with those partnerships. And I keep coming back to the, I mean, coming back to the same thing I keep bringing up, but this is a pretty significant event for us as a district, was the the, the partnership and engagement around the, the building, not just with the building, the community support, but also the leadership role that you took with, um, with DRA, the MSBA, um, the Compass, you know, to ensure that we effectively move through that project was something that I observed as well. I'm not disagreeing with anything that they're saying. I mean, it, it's more just making me wonder: are we are we looking to change something else? Like that's what I'm trying to yep. gauge. Um, or mm -hmm. are you just explaining where your rating was? Um, well, I think that the idea would be right that if we felt like, hopefully, no one comes to this meeting feels and feels like, well, I gave my rating and you know my heels are dug in. This is where I'm at. So. I guess if you hear other people's reasons for their ratings, then it's an opportunity to say, well, that's not the way I looked at it, or that is the way I looked at it, or, oh, you're changing my mind. I, or you can just say nothing. <laughs> no, I, I mean, when I look at the rubric, what we were just discussing, the difference between the two is really about deepening the partnerships and, and continuing to foster those relationships. And improving district effectiveness. Yeah. Which is tough to measure, but that is one of the differences between the two. Like, what is the district effectiveness? Yeah. I, that's right. I mean, again, I, if... Whether if, or not we're using munis properly, I Well, mean, so it. think about it with the budget cycle. I mean, when we went into the Board of Selectmen budget meeting, and this, I don't know if it made it into the final comments, was in one of my comments, but I actually think the pressure, I'll say, to invite Board of Selectmen or involve them in our budget process it did improve the efficiency. I mean, we basically went into the Board of Selectmen meeting and Brian Hur said, yep, I watched your process, very good job, um, very thorough, you know, I've got no questions. And so, to me, that seemed hugely efficient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, see, that's the thing. Like, I would say that our effectiveness as a district in working with the town has greatly improved since you've been a mem you know, uh, our superintendent for our district. Um, there's been a huge amount of initiatives that you've had to push through in a short period of time, and the trust that they have in your decision making for any of those groups has increased. So that's why I'm kind of like, maybe we should be at exemplary. Yeah. Um, that's where I'm going with it. I, I, there's nothing I disagree with, with with what's been stated. I think, if anything, it's a reminder of the amount of things that we've witnessed over the year. Okay. So we uh, that's goal four. So can I yep. say two, because one thing to note is we're going through this process in public, which is always a challenge, and we do have a studio audience tonight as well as a television audience. I, it's important to note that as we're going through this, that there are, for people who are not familiar with this, there are five sure. ratings along the continuum and all the discussions we're having tonight yeah. are ratings that sit somewhere between met and exceeded mm -hmm. or proficient and exemplary. Thank so you. I think overall I want to make sure that the community gets the message tonight that the, the overall evaluation is extremely positive. Mm -hmm. And just as we're having these what seem like splitting hairs discussions yeah. I think it's important for people who haven't stared at the rubric for the hours that we have um, to understand really what we're talking about. Right. And we want to make sure we give the fairest evaluation possible, but that's the margins we're working between yep. are, are in those two highest rating buckets. Thank you for clarifying that and or pointing that out. And there are 33 elements, by the way, that you're evaluating me yeah. on in addition to my four goals. So, yes. Well, and I, I mean, I know you and I talked about that this morning is that the discrepancies that we have as a committee between our ratings are between met and exceeded or proficient and exemplary. They're not between did not meet significant progress or, and no one went, 
no one disagreed going down it was all about going up yeah mm -hmm. so uh, i would echo what don stated I'm just going through yeah i think we're 100 percent top two boxes there yeah so, so do we want to talk about the um general evaluator comments did anyone see anything in there that they wanted to add to or um i don't know, discuss were there any other areas though that we were like split that you were concerned about well, i'm not you sure that you, one? you i don't think you you voted on that final number four yeah i don't think okay. we did either I think you and had I, the discussion i was hearing a lot of ex examples i'd probably move mine up to exemplary okay. it, just on that one you weren't that one no I, the one no, I was not that one i one would move good. mine i would move mine as well okay Which, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I was actually met on that one, and I, I think a lot of the comments, I agree with everything that you've said. I think I factored that in into other pieces, uh, maybe differently the way that, that you do. So I, I have no objection to moving okay. it. I, I th I'm comfortable in either place, but um, okay. I'm glad you brought that up. I then that we makes were. it. Which has the roll forward of moving it one makes, of yeah. these up to exceeded, right? Yeah. Um, on the so first that page. moves now, number four to exceeded, and then that also means district, district improvement goals, goals on the front exceeded. page goes yep. to exceeded. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Well, good night. You should go play the lottery. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay. Are we ready for page three? Oh, good. <laughs> We're only on page three. But that's, this is the longest part. Um, the rest will go quickly. So here we had the rate impact on student learning, and we're, we're already in high, so I don't, with the majority being in the high, I don't, I don't know that we need to discuss it. Right, okay. Um, um, but we can. And then there's um, the evaluator comments. Again, this is where I, where I tried to go before we voted on number four. Uh, I tried to have a representative group of, of everybody's comments, but if there's something that you had a question about that someone else said or something that you wanted to add, um, so that it's more comprehensive when it goes, uh, when it leaves our hands. Uh, let me know. I was, I was comfortable with. Yeah, I thought yeah. the comments were right on. Okay. Do you want to? Good. No. All it's right. Great. Great. Um. Uh oh. Page eight, I think. Right. Ooh, okay. but that was a big step. Well, because page seven, there's a complete agreement. All throughout right. well but again it's just a matter of if you saw comments you had a question about them or if you think that you, um, something else needs to be said to be more comprehensive so I'll make the overall statement that I was comfortable with all of this comments that you put together are you just you just want this to be over <laughs> that too but I was also comfortable with all of the comments that you put together. Um, so there were none of your comments that you felt were left out that you felt were really important to include I didn't. No, and I, the, the I, other problem was is that there were, were a lot of comments that were so similar to mine I couldn't remember if it was <laughs> mine or somebody else. There was a I lot. It. There yeah. was a lot of. <laughs> I did that. I did because I was starting to remember. Yeah, there was, was like, a lot of. Copy me. But that was great, right? I mean, the fact yeah, that there was, was so much consistent experience it, for so five good. different people, and that's the other thing for people to understand at home, is that you all did this independently, mm -hmm. and um, so that that was nice to see the. Consistencies, both from the perspective of places where um, that where you acknowledge a strength and places where I have improved. That was really great feedback where you've said that I've improved on things that you've pointed out to me as part of the mid-cycle, which is what this whole process is about. Um, and then areas of potential growth for me to consider for the next round. Um, so overall, it was very great feedback. I also think Helpful. it's really interesting for you that you've had the same five people review you the last two years which isn't always the case because that is a good point yeah, yeah. So. Huh. comment Jean it were there no I did have some but I just already discussed them with you so I'm comfortable with okay. the way that it's written so we're good so we are on page eight I just noticed okay. you have your coat on I you know what I got I know my, my hands are the temperature just went down so on page eight we have the management and operations rating I'm sure this is similar to the, the discussion we already had, um, except that, and you can tell me if um, you disagree, but let's, I think we should at least talk about 2D and 2E. Um, the others seem either we were in agreement or she was exemplary. Is that, is that a fair, oh. sorry. You mean 2A? Because 2D is 4 to 1. 
Yeah. Yeah, but two two A, she already ends up in exemplary. Oh, I mean, okay. Unless someone wants to talk someone else down, I think. I think it was um, the one that you and I struggled with. The Ellen, fiscal was system. Two E. Two E. So in this case, many of the comments called out, "What a great job! What a great process it had been." You all identified how positive having the Board of Selectmen um, not only attending our meetings but at the table which was at your, you know, you invited them to be part of that which was wonderful. Um, so it just seemed like it was a li it was kind of on the cusp there and it's not a big deal because it's, it's between proficient and exemplary once again. Um, hmm. So I, I, so I'll just, again, we've I will say that that I w I was one of the proficient ones, and I felt like that there were significant improvements as there have been every year, um, to the budget process. I thought that, and I think I put this in my individual comments. Um, I thought the inclusion of the board of selectmen was was a great idea, and it, it made it effective. Um, I still feel like there's a little bit of of ceiling, a little bit of room to the ceiling on the process um, in terms of actually our <laughs> sort of engagement and the clarity around yeah. which is the presentations where our feedback is supposed to come in and that came up when we got to the fees discussion yeah. as well so I, I again i'm you know proficient's a really good rating right yeah, and, to, absolutely. and so i just think from that perspective there were still times where it felt a little bit like the expectations were unclear which is why i landed okay mm -hmm. and so yep fair enough that was basically my my same analysis i think it was okay. a great improvement over yeah. the year before um and i think we're, we're moving in a strong direction but i definitely think we can all and by the way I think as a you know a shout out to all of the educators and all of my administrative team they go through this exact same process of course it's a different rubric for teachers and a different rubric for administrators and the superintendent has their own um, but proficiency is the stand is the goal and the um, it's it's not a bad thing right. to not get exemplary it doesn't it, it, it is it is our goal um, you would expect to have exemplary maybe in some areas in your work, just like we talked about the kids who happen to be better at math. Um, so I they appreciate the feedback. They don't have to go through it on TV, though. <laughs> but yeah. they don't have to. <laughs> no. All right. So then I think that was, Ellen, I don't think there was any. Yep, there's um, family, family concerns, concerns. Uh, 3D. Addresses family and community concerns in an equitable, effective, and efficient manner. And so there's three proficient to exemplary um, we can look at the rubric yeah, if that would see. help yeah okay. <laughs> oh wait which rubric which 3d 3, 3d 3d, 3D. Um, proficient do you see it mm-hmm So the example I thought of here, and I think I think I'm one of the exemplaries, but if someone else did it, <laughs> maybe no, I'm one of the exemplaries. And the reason I did it is I thought that um, the it, and it's in my comments, but sort of the lack of concern or the proactive communication around changing um, the principal and the leadership team at Elmwood was uh, very well received and so so the change was very well received and I take that as um, really positive feedback on proactive communication and something that we haven't seen before when changes like that are made I mean generally there are at least some questions and I, to me I just I really appreciated that um, and you know we can take the Hopkins proactive communication um, also into account here but I think that we're making a really big effort to uh, keep people informed before making changes um, and it's it's working out really well where we're getting we're not getting the negative feedback I agree with you I was the, I was the other exemplary I think but um, in, in what I would just add to that is that the work that you did with the principals to increase the um, consistency of newsletters and yep. communication approaches as well I think also just bolsters that um, what, what Ellen just said but I think you know we've we've already said several times tonight at this table about how you have tailored your um, 
res response approach plan to to many audiences um, and I think routinely when I go around town I I always hear from across the, the town what a great listener you are how approachable you are and that is definitely um, something that has had a positive you know waterfall down through the rest of um, of the district and I think done gone a long way towards reducing the complaints that that we tend to get or have gotten over the years um, so I, sorry were you? Yeah, okay I, was I just the only thing is I the, the things that and this may be a difference I put bucketed a lot of what you just talked about into communication not necessarily family concerns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know addresses family and community concerns in an equitable effective and efficient manner again we're playing at the highest margins here right I, I, I was one of the um, proficient it's not that I have a, any concern about it um, So a couple other things, just if you're wavering, that I put in the family and community concerns bucket are the school calendar uh, committee and conversation and recommendations that we had at the beginning of the year, the um, public forum that we just talked about right now about around math um, pathways. You know, those are both huge topics of community and family um, concern. Already we're setting up the forum to um, start a conversation about recess. So. I just find you're right that we don't see if an individual family comes to you with a concern about their child that's way outside of uh, the scope of our observation but as far as you know on the broader level I, I think that um, so what you actually pointed me to I went back to my my own mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't an example you brought up but it is an example that I brought up <laughs> um, and I, as I reflect upon it, I think I would move it to move this to exemplary e using the, the example of the the inquiries about school lunch program. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I thought, exceptionally handled in the way in which you m and had Mr. Dumas and I always forget Kevin's last name. Welch. Mr. Welch um, <laughs> engage with the concerned community members and really developed a great partnership. We saw that in the in the Whitson's report. Mm -hmm. Um, I witnessed it firsthand in some of the in uh, interactions that he had at the at the wellness fair. Um, so that was an example of really addressing a community concern in an, in a very effective way that actually created, I think, a, an effective partnership. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to move that on. Yeah, see, okay. you're, you're smart. And you should listen to yourself. In the interest <laughs> of full disclosure, um, I was only proficient there. <laughs> so, given all my self talk here, I'm moving <laughs> myself to example. So, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That's okay. So we now, done? not almost. Oh, but for. I just want to thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sometimes when you, you tell me these things, I, I almost forget that it, it, it's a nice reminder. Um, is right. there, I don't think there's anything else, Ellen. Um, yeah, the only the one problem. is managing conflict. So it's three and proficient, two and exemplary. I'm going to check my own individual rating before I start talking. <laughs> I, this one was really. So this uh, is a hard one for you because you don't see. I manage a lot of conflict every single day, mm -hmm. um, so and you don't get to see much of it. Um, so let me let me just see. Let's see four Does contract F. negotiations count. <laughs> yes. Um, grievances. Grievances. Consensus building. What is it? Four F. Four F four. Oh, it's a whole section managing conflict and then there are three elements I suppose under it. Um, yeah. So if you look at the rubric, I did rate myself at, as exemplary at the beginning of this year. Um, and because these are all things that I do um, and I do model this element. I model it for um, I don't want to call anybody out at this meeting, <laughs> so I model it for members of my administrative team who maybe need some help in managing conflict. And here's a good example about talking about managing of mo how they put in can model this element. 
Conflict resolution is something that I've been trained in early on because of my psychology background, whether it be with families or students or um, fellow administrators. I do a lot of helping my team to manage conflict in a very positive way. To be able, we've done a whole book study on mm -hmm. difficult conversations, for example. Um, and we use a portion of our admin council to talk about how do you resolve in a, in a respectful way differences of opinion that arise. And we've been using it in par partially in the evaluation cycle, but also when maybe administrators have to have um, difficult conversations with families. Um, always acknowledging that if, so if you're having a difficult conversation and somebody is upset, that's the first place you begin is by acknowledging the person's feelings and that they're upset. And so I do a lot of modeling of this, perhaps in a situation with a fellow administrator. It could be that they're in conflict with um, somebody that they're evaluating. And what I will often do is pull together a meeting and then run the meeting so that the administrator can observe me doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is something that you don't get to see me do very often that I, I don't know what evidence I could give you um, because it's often around personnel issues or evaluation issues. Um, I think the differences that we should call out maybe to help us with this one is where, what's the difference between exemplary and proficient? Part of it is modeling the element, which I do. I mean, I, I did it twice today just at central office. Um, with a couple of situations that were happening where there was a difference of opinion um, between a couple of departments and they just were not able to hear each other's point of view. So I have now established over my time with my team that people will come to me and because they know that I will help to resolve the issue. And we, we can agree to disagree, but at least we can have conversations around conflict that end up with at least people feeling that be, they've been heard. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, well, and I think we could, I mean, while you're right, we don't, we're not in, we don't belong as part of those conversations. We can observe from the um, agendas that you showed us from the admin right. meetings, right. that that is an ongoing, because I know the difficult conversations book was actually last year, but it, I was, I was pleased to see Right, it was. But we did the follow up this year. Right, and so that's what I was going to say. So I was pleased to see on the agendas that that is still remaining a consistent and and. And the practiced. principals will quote like they will call it out when they're saying that you know this is something that they've used. But things that phrases that come out to me in this one is um, provides professional development for the administrative team. So that's the the book study that we do, and then in the second section. Um, constructive and respect, respectful manner and empowers and supports administrators to use these approaches. So that's under exemplary. And then the final one is encouraging dialogue and different points of view. I do that all the time. So I think this is one I feel strongly about, although I know, you know, I, I, I've given you many, many examples, but I do feel that this is a strength. Um, you can tell because I've talked about it more than I have weighed in on many of the other things. So. for what that. So it's interesting then, why did you rate yourself proficient? Um, we didn't. Where? No, she, she, she rated it. Exemplary. You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the rubric I did. No, I meant like in You mean her... when I did my self-evaluation? Mm. I guess I was coming from a place, that's a great question, um, Lori. I guess I felt for myself that I wanted that to be the beginning. So this is an evaluation, you're evaluating me, and as you've said, this is the second year that we've been a joint team. So I wanted to begin at a place that was proficient, and I guess have the opportunity f to have the kinds of discussions we've had tonight, which is, if that's the, if that's where the beginning step is, you know, do we believe um, that she's exceeded it? Um, so, but I guess having said what I just said about the rubric, I also didn't reference back to the rubric again until Ellen and I were talking about it on Monday. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I 
I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, though. So, you know, I'm fine with what it, where it stands. It's not a deal breaker. Well, in light of what the rubric says, in my opinion, I agree that the exemplary rating is where you fall. Um, although I also agree with your assessment that it's really difficult to make a first-hand assessment. It's all it's all second-hand information. I would another time next time I can provide you because of course this is only one of the 33 elements so I could include this in my survey for example um, that I've given you some survey data from administrators before I could add some questions around this um, that could give you some better data that's fine I thought there were some that did support this though and I can't remember specifically now what they were but I as I noted that there was you know, there was improvement from one survey to the next in some targeted areas like like this and particularly around modeling. Um. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't think it's it's a problem. I, I really didn't give you any specific um, feedback on this and to Lori's point I did rate myself as proficient. So I think although I won't call it out as a specific I wouldn't think I would want to because it's something I feel like I don't have to necessarily work on I could include more evidence on it so we don't have to belabor it I was I was already there so I'm not going backwards but I whatever the rest of you think is fine well so the other question I have and it's not it's not to um, belittle the fact that having a majority on exemplary is obviously different than proficient, but does it affect any overall rating in that no. change? No. That's just, that's just one element of the 33, kind of 4F. Um, I was one of the proficients, so I would, I would definitely move it to the exemplary side because of the fact that when I read through the rubric, it speaks to me more than the proficient. Um, and especially in light of all the examples that you provided, so so I would change mine. Sorry. Okay. Nope. That's all it takes. <laughs> um, is there anything else? Nope. Sorry. I, mean, I, I was looking through the the survey results. I was trying to find what Jean was referring to. Um. Thank you all. Nice work. Thank you. I again think that this is the most impossible way of being reviewed in public, so you do it with class. That's the <laughs> modeling right there. <laughs> okay. That concludes the chair report. <laughs> you're, you're, you're done. You're done. You're um, down to okay, five C. new business item C. Can capital. I talk about the How about EFR? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's let's hear let's hear I'm about the ESBC. I'm gonna do a quick. So, um, just a couple of, of highlights, but I want to make sure that the committee's updated because there is a, a there's a lot going on um, because we have entered the detailed design phase. Um, as you know, we've hired a construction manager. We're continuing to get more data and information about the building. The committee met again um, yesterday um, to review some additional proposals by um, the architect around um, as we're starting to zero in on what the specific building materials are going to look like. We're getting more cost estimates for those. Um, we're getting more cost estimates for some of the site work around the leveling of the building based on some in, 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 um, some data that we're, that we're receiving. Um, there are, as you would expect in this process, as we get into detailed design, there are decisions we're making around building materials, around building structures um, that um, do nothing to in any way take away from the incredible educational experience that it's going to be. But quite frankly, I guess the best way to put it is make the building look a little bit different than, the, than some of the pictures that have been shown. So to that end, we have been discussing um, how following town meeting do we um, just be able to give the public an update on um, where we are in the building, what are the decisions that are making, what does detailed design mean, who is the construction manager, and, and what is the, the update to the timeline. So um, as an elementary school building committee meeting, or elementary school building committee, um, Dr. McLeod and I discussed some ideas um, for how to engage with the public, so I'll be working with the chair 
um, to, to, to set up some opportunities there too. Um, it's all progressing, I think, really positively. Um, we continue to be really pleased with all of the um, teams that we've hired, including the construction manager. And the um, biggest thing is we remain on time for opening in 2018. That's what I was just going to ask. Are we yes. still on time? We are still on time. Is there going to be an update at town meeting? There is yes. not. Oh, there oh, is. Sorry, today they said yes. I didn't oh. think so either, but apparently today they said when they Norman talked about reports, yes. so it just seems like yeah, it seems like a great opportunity. I heard that just Joe at was the beginning it. at reports. Mm -hmm. you know, John, that's not the information they had given you, but then yeah. when we went today under reports, they said that ESBC. I mean, Wait. Joe and probably Joe and Mike. Okay. But they they did I say they were giving a report. ESBC, you didn't. We're getting an update on the library too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was asked. That was asked, right? They didn't. They did not put in for a report. Did you notice that half the building is gone, though? Um, Isn't that amazing? Of the library, you can see yep. how the two buildings are separate. It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? Five C capital project article warrant number sixteen dash zero five seven in the amount of six thousand fifty seven dollars for our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for payment of the invoice for a capital project invoice is appropriated in Article twenty four. This is a recommended motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? I would seek a motion to approve the payment of warrant number 16-057 in the amount of $6,057 to the vendor as outlined in the warrant. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Nickerson.